Hey, welcome back. So well, I think we're ready to get started. You'll see that I kind of made some updates to my to my Vim and my terminal. So I finally got the ESLint stuff working as well. So yeah, let's get to it. So at the moment, what we've got, we've got a basic test text, sorry, and password input. And what we actually want to do is we want to try something a bit different. We want to try maybe something like a, a select input. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's see. First thing I actually really want to do is I want to try and see if I can turn this into a switch statement. So we're going to go form input and type and we're going to say, okay, well, let's see if the, if the type is password. We want to say, well, what we want to do is we want to say we want to, I think, actually need the case first, if I remember correctly. And that we want to do is we want to say we want to return all of this. So we're going to return all of that up there. We're going to say, well, if we're going to have a default, I think, and we're just going to say, well, our default is going to be the the text input. So if we don't specify a type, we get the text input. Or if we specify a wrong type, we get the we get the text input. And then what we can do is we can just go and say, well, we're going to delete that for now. And see what happens yeah okay cool so that that looks like it's working so yeah let's see okay cool so that's working okay so next thing that we want to do is we want to try a select so what we're going to do is we're going to go up i'm going to say okay well let's do a select input and the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to say well we're just going to put the name the label we're going to go on change and we're going to say That's going to be select. Yeah, so one of the things I still probably want to do is just try to get Emmet working again as well. But for now, this looks that's working well for me, the setup. So let's see. I'm going to go option. Yeah, like I said, no Emmet. Okay, so let's see. Option, and we're going to go another option, and we're going to say just that. The value that we want is we probably want to just have some sort of default value and then we want to say just this is an empty value so we're going to go to that so one of the other things i did is i changed from alacrity terminal to kitty terminal the reason for that is we get now font ligatures so we get like these little nice little something like that so that's a font ligature so instead of it being two separate characters it kind of now looks like one so I think that's pretty cool. Okay, anyway, let's get let's get um keep going. Let's say and the name we want is just the name. And we want a we don't want a label here. We want we also actually don't want a value in there. So I think what we do want is we want some sort of div to wrap all of this. We want to say, well, let's close the div. And now let's say we want to do that, that, that. Cool. So now we got that. Now let's see what we want to do. We want to have a div up here that's also uh, that's going to be the label. So let's see. The reason why we don't choose the label is is that part of the HTML spec says you need all kinds of stuff that goes with the label that we don't necessarily want in here right now. Or, I don't know. Like if it's a problem, maybe we'll just add the labels for now, but later. But for now, just keep it a div makes it simple because what we're trying to do is we're just trying to build out the form builder and then later on we'll see about doing like maybe aria stuff or what um anyway i mean just not digress too much let's see so we want a class name maybe yeah we want to say well py2 px1 so we keep it the same as the other ones and let's see so we want to be able to now view the select so what we need to do is, is that we need to go down where we specify form. Let's see, I think it was this one. So we want to go form. So we want to say, well, yeah, that's the one we want. So for me, that's GS. So that's one of the cool things about NeoVim. I think Telescope, the plugin for NeoVim 0.5 is we get, we can just browse the symbols in our file like, like that. I think that's pretty cool. Anyway. Let's see, we get we get that now. So now we get we want to do this. So we want to say what's our country. 
So we've got a country over there. And what we want to do is we want to say our type is actually. Our type is a select. So when we say when we select type. Okay, so you'll see that we've still got this address line address line one. We also want to change that. So we want to say change included and then double quotes. And then let's see, we got the country. See how BIM is pretty cool. Um so let's see where can cool. We got the country and we it's a select currently. So what we need to do now is we need to make another case up here that says that well if it's a select, then let's display our select input. So we're gonna go select. We'll say I want to change that and we're gonna say, well, I wanna select input that. Cool. So now it's a country, but you can see it's not very styled. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try maybe just a little bit styling to make it a bit prettier so we're going to say well let's go class class name we're going to say full okay so it's full now we're going to say i think what was the padding on our on our base okay cool so we got the padding of two for that so cool we so we we get the tailwind yes lynn stuff now as well so that that kind of auto up so that's pretty cool i think okay so you also see that we get some code completion there for for tailwind um I think that's awesome. Okay, so let's see. We got border gray three. Ooh, okay, so not gray gray. We can play much to um. <laughs> let's see. Go, got border. Okay, so cool. Now we just need to go for the rounded look. So let's see. We're gonna go rounded MD. We're gonna go shadow. What was the other shadow? Shadow, just normal shadow. Okay, so that kind of looks like the inputs. Um, it's just one or two other things. I think we just want to do the focus outline none. And let's see what this looks like. So yeah, we don't have a focus county. So let's maybe just put up a focus there. Focus. I think the other one we had was Indigo 500. So yeah, maybe the other thing that we also need to do is maybe look at bit at the theming not so much like the styling for the inputs but maybe just something that allows you to to specify like what the what the accent color should be cool so that looks pretty cool so we've kind of got some styling going now um so why we what we want to do next is we want to specify i think some set of options so we're going to go options and we're going to say, okay, well, we let's see, we need to specify some options, options down here. So, um, let's go options. And now the options need to be a list of like, um, object essentially with the one being like a, a key type or a value. I think maybe let's go for value because that's what it is. And, the you know options html element so let's see so um i'm from south africa so we're going to go that and then we're just going to use label for what the text should be so we're going to go south africa and let's see the other one maybe is okay okay so what should be the other country I think maybe let's make it, yeah, let's make it United States of America. So let's say the value should be There we go, United States of America. Okay, so let's see, let's, let's complaining about something now. The nice thing about it, we get some Errors no, we got some errors displaying. So it's saying we got a duplicate value. So let's see if we can change that label. There we go. Okay, cool. So now that's sorted. So we need to now go back to our select input. So let's see. And what we need to do is we need to go options dot map. We need to say option. And then the option is going to be that. 
and then the value is going to be option dot value and this is going to be also need to take those out and we need to go option not label okay so let's see so options is not getting passed through so we need to also now pass through I guess some people make it so it's other cool thing about something like tab down it kind of tells you what other people do for like um for things like value names or yeah var variable names sorry so you kind of get a sense of like okay maybe i should call it this or I should call it that or if, um oh here's a suggestion if if you may be feeling a bit but we're not feeling that right now so we're just gonna go see if we can go for input okay cool so we get and what we probably want to do is just maybe still have that like default value up here we say that for when a user hasn't selected something yet okay so let's see so it's failing on something so it's failing because that is empty so we get the default so one of the things i still want to do is maybe just have like a custom select thing like where i write it from scratch instead of using the html one just so we can do some cool pretty stuff like have this thing be kind of grayed out like the placeholder color for for the text or password but for now this looks pretty cool um so maybe one of the other things we also want to do somewhere in the future is have uh the option of being able to pass something like a url so instead of options you get something like url and then you specify what the what the um request url is to get the values and then also something like uh it's a uh, options mapper and then the idea is, is options mapper is some sort of function that gets a value from from this url or basically like an item in the list and then what happens is that in the background what the select statement does it it maps through the list of items it gets from the url and then it calls this object map and this object map essentially then returns the uh, a value and a label but yeah i'll leave that for another time so for now what we get is we get this this basic um, select statement and what we also now need to do is we also now need to check if we can maybe update the values um, so which is going to be maybe a bit more interesting okay so let's see so we want to say on change and i'm assuming the on change in this case is actually just going to set the the option but we'll see what what happens when we actually actually now let's just do this let's do uh cons test on change value and then all we do is okay, clear okay so we can clear this stuff out Let's see on the console, clear out the console. Okay, so I need to put the key in there as well. Okay, so we get a target. We say, is there maybe a value on this target? Well, I think in the case of a select, it might actually be something like 
selected option key attributes of child care list labels So those are the options. Okay, so let's see. So okay, let's see if we can do something like I doubt this is going to work. But I'm curious nonetheless. Okay, no, it actually does work. Okay, so all that, all that looking around for nothing. But anyway, so but at least now we get a value, and the cool thing is we can see that the value is the key that we want anyway. So what we can do in this case is we're just going to say on change. So the on change value that we're passing through uh, looks like it's fine. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do now is we need to do something where we compare these option statements with the value that we that we passing. So we're going to do something like. Let's say so we want a function here yeah? and we want to say turn okay. Okay, cool. So we're returning now, but what we want to do is we want to say that if the value is equal to the option dot value, we want to say we want to return this as selected. So let's use a country. Okay, so we need to do this as well. So we need to go E equals on change E dot target a value because you see we get some funny value over there. Okay, so I need to fix the keys as well, but for now, let's see if this works. So, yeah. South Africa, United States. So, yeah. South Africa, United States, there we go. And we can read the values when somebody selects them. Um, that looks pretty cool. Um, let's see. So, what we do now, we need to do something where we say, well, what the key is going to be. So, the key in this case is going to be just the option of value. In this case, it's also just going to be the option of value. Let's see if we get any more errors. Cool. Looks like it looks it looks pretty cool, I think. Um, yeah, so I mean, we get this whole nice looking form just off of this. Maybe one of the next things we'll need to do is we'll need to do something where we can um, return some sort of 
form data from this form builder. So something like on submit and then have a handler there that deals with the with the data and then the idea is on submit goes through this there's the goes through this form state and basically just picks out the values from the from the react state and then just returns an object with a key value pair not a key state pair and then yeah so and then the idea is that on the submit is you can then um, get the values from from this form builder that way when somebody presses the save button so but i'll leave you um i'll leave you here and on to the next one